A very good evening to all our viewers. Welcome to this week's uh, edition of The Agenda. My name is uh, Toivon Jobela, your host. Tonight we are really, really excited and uh, privileged to have uh, the president of the Independent Patriots for Change, IPC, that is uh, Dr. Pandoleni Itula, uh, to speak to us about a host of things in, uh, regarding IPC. Uh, Doc, uh, thank you very much for making time. We're really, really privileged. Thank you very much indeed and good evening and thank you everybody else for tuning in and uh, going away from your other responsibilities and absolutely delighted to be here again. It's been a while. It's been a <laughs> it's while. It's been a while. It's been, a while. Yes. It's yeah. been so a while that um, last time we spoke yeah. on a platform like this uh, and that was, uh, I think, um, Okay, we, we had a brief chat last yes, year, which yes. didn't go With well. The COVID but, one, yeah, yes. yeah, but the proper one, yeah. you were still just an independent candidate who, who or you just served, uh, ran as, a, as an independent yeah. candidate. Yeah. And then so much has happened since then. Absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You, you and other patriots uh, yeah. formed the IPC. Yeah. And uh, 20, in the same year, a couple of months later, yeah. uh, you participated in the election yeah. and uh, did extremely well for a new party. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, so um, let's talk about um, uh, IP, your assessment of IPC's uh, uh, performance at the local authorities where you are either in an absolute majority mm -hmm. or where you are in a, in a ruling coalition. Yeah. Uh, Swakop, Moon, Valvish Bay and Windu, what is your assessment of uh, the party's performance there? Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Um, IPC came into existence somewhere uh, in August the 2nd, uh, 2020. Yeah. But the whole sort of um, conception of it came amongst five people. Um, Commander Kangulu, Ims Nashinge, uh, Franz Tapopi, Nautapi and myself and two others who are still in the trenches as it were. Mm -hmm. After the declaration of the Supreme Court yeah, yeah. and say what are we going to do now and then we then came together and formulated a lot of things including the constitution of it mm -hmm. and then came together but it was really in a short period of time yes. in which we needed to both submit our registration with the ECN in order to participate in the elections mm -hmm. and also to submit to the BIPA our emblems our name our, our uh, flags and everything else to make sure that we are legitimately registered in terms of the Electoral Act of Namibia in terms of section 135. Mm -hmm. And uh, that section basically obliges political parties that their primary object is to promote yeah. democratic elections. And that brought us to participate within a short period of three months in um, elections for the regional and uh, local authority councils as well. Mm -hmm. And we had to select our participants and delegates and representatives according to the new constitution. Mm. And we democratically went to the grassroots to make sure that we get everybody involved coming from there onwards and then ensuring that we've got a representative team that is going to be able to understand the principles of the IPC. Mm. Now, during that short period of time we were able to get, and, and, and I need to correct you, we don't have any single council in this country where IPC has got an absolute majority. Mm. There are, even like for example in Windhoek, mm -hmm. the person that has got the absolute majority as a single party is the Swapo party with five councillors. Yes. There are 15 councils in Windhoek. IPC has got four, um, PDM has got one, NUDO has got one, AR has got two, with Swapo having five. Yes. Effectively Swapo is in the majority. Mm -hmm. Now when you go down to Ranyamun, we've got th uh, three councillors plus one LPM councillor, mm -hmm. and then the other three are SWAPOs. And in Lutherans, we've got two IPC councillors, one PDN and one LPM. And in Wolfies Bay, we've got four out of 10, the others were out of seven. Mm -hmm. And in also Swakop Moon, we've got four out of 10, and one out of um, seven in Arandes, and one out of seven in Hentis Bay, one out of seven in Karibeb, and Usakos, and Omaruru, in Okahanja. And then it's also in Aranos, one out of seven, and Marintal, and also in Karasberg, one out of five in Kalkren. Mm. And then when you move to the north, you've got one out of seven in uh, Ochivarongo, two out of seven in Hrodfontein, two out of seven in Tsumep, and then three from Omthia, Onipa, Ondangwa, Ongwediva, Oshakati, out of seven. Mm. And then we've got Okahao, two out of seven, 
and then uh, um, uh, Utapi two out of seven and Oshifo in Orakana two out of seven, one out of um, five in the village of Otsandi, two out of Helauna Fidi out of seven, and then Enana two out of seven, one out of seven in Rundu, one out of seven in Congo, one out of seven in Divindu, and one out of seven in Katima Mulilo. Mm. No way in the entire country have got an overall majority okay. completely. In addition to that, what we need to understand is this, that there aren't any provisions in the laws about coalitions whatsoever in any local government at all. Mm. The, the Local Authority Act, and we need to remember that council, local authority councillors are creatures of parliament. Mm. The parliament has made up the Local Authority Act and prescribed the duties and responsibilities of the local authorities. Mm -hmm. Even during the elections of the local authorities, political party may have manifestos pertaining to the national governance mm. of Namibia, mm. but not so much to the local authorities. There is a misconception mm. in the public about local authority councils as belonging to IPC or IPC majority. What it is in terms of Section 11 of the Local Authorities Act is that, that irrespective of political parties, local authority councillors will come together Mm -hmm. and elect amongst them their chairperson that is the mayor and the deputy. So the decisions taken there are democratic decisions that are taken in compliance with an act and mm -hmm. every single councillor that mm -hmm. has participated in a local authority election is bound by the decision of that. Mm -hmm. In the Winduk city, we attempted working out whether there will be a majority based on common goals yeah. amongst those parties that didn't belong to the Swapo party, mm. where the Swapo party had five councillors. We draw up a memorandum of agreement to try and work out as people who haven't been together. You don't get married to anybody. You just got married. Congratulations as well Thank to you. anybody that you just yeah. saw on the street yesterday. You need to work out certain principles, build trust and confidence in yeah. order to be able to formulate an approach, a common approach. Yeah. There will be sort of differences, etc. as long as there's no contradictions, the path to the destiny is going to be common. However, in the delivery of services to the people of Namibia in the localities and the citizenry of those localities, mm. it's their responsibility as a unitary body of all the members of that council. Yeah. Any failure of delivery of services cannot be attributed to any one entity of a political party mm -hmm. because the law does not allow for that. There is a misconception with some of the journalists trying to feed the public the misinformation mm -hmm. of this is an IPC controlled council. The decisions in there are democratic. If IPC was given an ability to have a two-thirds majority or even a 50% plus one majority to make decisions and dictate to others what is to be done. That would have been an easy situation. And nowhere from Oranya Moon all the way down to Rakana is there a situation where IPC can be judged as a party with a majority of councillors in those chambers. Hmm. The decisions in those chambers and the failure of those chambers to deliver any uh, services to the people should be apportioned squarely on all the individual members representing political parties in those chambers. Mm. That situation is very different from the parliament, where the majority of one political party can come together and formulate an, a, a bill and pass that bill into parliament as an act mm. by a ruling party. There isn't any ruling parties there. In order to rule, you need to have a majority. Yeah. And there's no single party anywhere else that has got a majority, except in the northern towns, from uh, from Ochivarongo all the way down there. Mm. Where Swapo is in the majority in Omfia, in Onipa, Ondangwa, Oshakati. And surprisingly, those councillors, yeah. both, in fact, it's just IPC in Swapo, are working together really hand in hand to deliver services. Yes, they've got their difficulties because when these elections took place, there has been massive debt in those councils. Mm. There's been massive misadministration uh, in those councils as well. And in addition to that, there's been massive entrenched corruption in those councils as well. Mm. Now we need to understand in terms of Article 102, Sub Article 3, 
in every local authority, regional authority, there shall be a council which shall be the supreme decision maker. Mm. They make decisions, councillors. They don't execute the decisions. The execution of decisions is in the powers of the executive and the administrator. Mm. Now, you have got that sort of three-layered approach where the decision makers are in the politicians here as a legislative chamber. Yeah. Their decisions in order to implement the provisions of section 30, 31 and 32 of the Local Authorities Act will be executed by the Chief Executive Officer yeah. who will progress it down to the administrators, the electricians, the head of department, the strategic executive. Yeah. Now, when a decision has been taken and the delivery of services has not taken place to the citizenry, the person to be blamed is not the councillors. Mm. It is the middle administration here, mm. the executive. Now, entrenched in this executive, is another culture, complete corruption in those executive decisions made mm. by the councillors are not often executed. And this is where we recommend that mm. there must be a time limit upon which decisions are taken and execution. And if someone does not execute them, then they can be called back for a, a disciplinary hearing. Mm. We need also to understand that political parties, while they have got representatives in those councils, yeah. have got very little administrative influence in the decision making process yeah in terms of section 136 of the electoral act mm. there is what they call an authorized person that authorized person in the political parties is usually the administrator the chief administrator in rpc is the national general secretary mm. she is the one who signs of the nominations of the delegations they are therefore accountable for administrative purposes to yeah, that. Yeah. We in IPC have gone a step further. We created what we call the chief whip coordinator. Yeah. As is required, we put in people who will be our representatives in those councils to ensure that things go smoothly, to ensure that our councillors turn up, they vote and they participate in the management and in the uh, policy making of the council. Mm -hmm. Now, I've just actually heard which I received um, a document yeah. from the chief whip coordinator. Mm -hmm. We've got one, two, three, four chief whip coordinator. One is um, Clute in the south, mm -hmm. coordinating the chief whips in the Karas region and the Harta region. And we've got Ura, Ura, um, who is Christian Quira, who's coordinating, Christopher Quira, who's coordinating Erongo, Ochodonjupa, and Komas and Omaheke. Mm. And what is given us is a complete report, and I've just asked NGS to release this report yeah. to the media and to the public so that we have got an idea of what councillors have been doing. And it's not only IPC council, it's the first ever report mm. where the public will be made privy to what is taking place there. And it contains information about the population of the town, it contains the, uh, about the budget of the town, what has been agreed, what has been executed. Yeah. So the notion to blame a political party for non-delivery of services to the public yeah. is completely misplaced it's got its own intentions by journalists or whoever. And I've seen a few people on social media that are making those judgments without having any information. That's extremely irresponsible for any mature adult that wish mm. to be seen as someone who informs the public. Yeah. In addition to that, it's paramount in understanding to understand that local authority councils' decisions, in the majority of them, yeah. are subject to ministerial approval. We have just seen the involvement of Honorable Erastus Utoni in Hruat Fontaine after they suspended their chief executive for reasons that they clearly indicated that there was untoward conduct that needed to be investigated. Mm. Now, there is a provision in it that was drafted, which was not as yet gazetted, which imparts that whenever a suspension of CEO takes place, it must be with approval from the minister. So the Namibian government under the leadership of the Swapo party has created governance instruments that controls remotely councillors mm. so that councillors cannot make any decision, including the appointment of the CEO, without approval by the minister, subject to approval by the minister, mm. including also delivery of land. Before you deliver land, unless you use the Flexible Land, land Tenor Act, etc., which is supposed to be giving us leeway to deliver land really fast. Mm. Now, 
Some people are saying it's now been a year and a half and there hasn't been this done, etc. Yeah. It's been 30 years mm. of SWAPO administration and we have seen an increase in lack of accommodation, lack of uh, services, sanitations, water, electricity mm. to the vast majority of our people and increase in poverty. Now, if you are really truly just and you want to judge the performance of anyone, you cannot judge them on a one year and a half where they were trying to find their positions and bearings and cleaning up and understanding that. In IPC, we carried out inductions of all our councillors yeah. all over the country, in addition, of course, of the ministerial inductions. But we knew the flaws in the ministerial inductions. And when you go to our councillors, they believe in the rule of law, they implement the rule of law. And that's why in some of the northern councils says, yeah, this IPC is always section what, section what. Previously, we just used to take the decision. Mm -hmm. We need to be very careful that mm -hmm. in Namibia, in Article 1, we believe in the rule of law. Yeah. That is the guiding principle. However, the rule of law comes up to this level, and then the rule of men, subject to ministerial approval, takes over. Whatever decision is taken by the councils, mm -hmm. if it's not in favor of a minister, it can be overruled. Mm. So the lack of implementation, yes, there will be squambles of all these people yeah. who are not politicians as yet. Some of them are just taking off as politicians, never been in administration, decision making as such. And they are still being guided. Yeah. And many of them still have to familiarize themselves with the local authority on both parties. Mm. Yes, there are some um, um, people who have been veterans of local authorities, that Honorable Kahungu, for example, <laughs> that has been mayor and everything else, <laughs> that is supposed to be guiding. But notwithstanding that, what we've got very often in councils, especially in the Windu Council, is young, ambitious men, leaders, that wants to leave a mark of their own, yeah. who believe that unless I'm on the steering wheel, this council will be distracted and destroyed completely. Yeah. Any decision that will be taken, unless it can be accredited to me, it will not take place. Those actions and those behaviors are contrary to the belief of humanity and the delivery of services yeah. to our people. So the performance in coalition or out of coalition, a coalition doesn't exist anywhere whatsoever in Namibia of any local authority. Yeah. What it is, is men and women uh, determined to deliver services to these people that are trying to work together, mm. despite having different political affiliations, guided by political parties, but controlled by the ultimate boss, the Minister mm. of Urban and Rural Development. Yeah. So the performance so far has been reasonably very good. The achievements in Oranyemund, uh, Ludres beautifully having also their crawfish festival recently. In uh, um, Wolfis Bay, we've seen land delivery, but we need to make sure that we don't take credit for all of it. Mm. Some of it has already been in the pipeline as it went, because decisions of governments don't take place like that. Yeah. They get decided, implemented, approved, etc., and it can take two to three years to do that. So some of the achievements that one may claim mm. has really genuinely been achievements in the pipeline already. Okay. In Suakop Moon, there's um, uh, various um, uh, activities taking place. And obviously, when you've got people from different political persuasions, they are still looking at each other as, that is Suapo, that is IPC, that's that. What I'm encouraging all the councillors in the entire country to do mm. is to work together only with the best interests of the people of Namibia in that regard and leave away their political affiliation because they are creatures of parliament. Yeah. Their decisions are based on what the parliament has already said. If we were the government in the Republic of Namibia, we will be guided by our own manifesto as to what we promise the people of Namibia to deliver. Yeah. On this occasion in the local authority is what the parliament has given the councillors to deliver. You know, it's like mom and say, dad saying, go and look after the cattle. Yeah. You've got no choice. If they get lost, they will still come and ask you, why didn't you bring them all home? Indeed. So that is basically what it is there. And, and everybody else will be privy to the document soon. Mm -hmm. We will release it so that we give the public the responsibility and accountability that the party has taken. Indeed. Doc, thank you very much for that thank elaborate uh, answer. Um, there are things... Um, that uh, the parties, that council 
has an absolute um, say on. Um, of course, you, you spoke about, you know, council can take decisions yeah. and then uh, the executive, uh, the executives of those executives. councils must then execute and, and so forth, which is 100% which is correct. But things like the, the appointment of the CEO mm. of the city of Vinduk, mm. um, council is the main, is the real McCoy there, if mm. I can call it that way, because and, um, and management committee, for example, IPC is the dominant uh, uh, party in that space. Uh, the chairperson belongs to, to the party and, and everything like that. How can this, the, the heartbeat of our, of our country, the capital city, not have an, a, C, a substantive CEO for the period that you have been at council? How it's long? Like, it's like uh, IPC not having a president. It can never function. Yeah. How long has the city of Windhoek yeah. been in existence and ever since the days of Nilo Tapopi, yeah. back in 2008, as I may recall, etc., without a CEO? Yeah. Over a period of almost six years, what it, we didn't have a substantive CEO. So when um, Kahimi se left yeah. recently for whatever reasons there, it was about three, four years ago. Yes. And that period was then a transitional period yeah. where the new councillors came in. I've never seen the processes that was involved in the selection of the CEO. Yeah. Neither have been we privy as a political party to that process. Yes. We must be very careful in terms of the roles of the council and the roles of the management committee. Yes. The management committee does not appoint the council, uh, the, the CEO. The CEO is appointed by the council sitting together in a meeting in terms of section 14 mm. of council meetings. And when all that process takes place, there is mechanisms, including the shortlisting, the CEO is involved, etc. We had an acting CEO who was also the head of human resources, who was also a member of the panel of interviewers, interviewing his future boss. Mm. Now, if you consider that not to have any conflict of interest whatsoever, then I am not quite sure what it is. In addition to that, that process also requires any senior member of the Department of Human Resources to be present. Yes. But it didn't specify what is meant from that, from the information that I can take from there. Mm. The shortlisted, I've never seen an application from anybody who applied, neither the shortlisted members. I know that it, I understand that the then mayor was privy to that listing. And I've never been there. And remember, he was also a leader of a political party or political formation that was party of the majority of those formations making decisions in that regard. And also an ex officio of the management committee at the time of that decision making process last year. Mm. And at the time of that decision making process, the majority of the members there, three of them was IPC. But those are democratic decisions that are taken in them. But only when the council has made a decision on who's going to be on the interview panel in, in conjunction with the CEO, if that process has been frustrated in any way whatsoever. Mm. The blame is not on IPC, it is in the executive. He's the head of administration of the institution. He's the one that communicates to the potential candidates. Mm. He's the one actually who was responsible for the shortlisting, not even the management committee, neither was IPC involved. I believe neither was any other political party involved. Yeah. This is where I'm saying that we need to separate between the administrators down at the bottom here, the executive and the council. The council came to a decision, we need a CEO. And then they pass it on to the executive to communicate with the public and say, invitation for it and then the communication departments of the council should then be involved to inform everybody we are inviting applications mm. when they come those applications they don't come to a political party they don't go to the management committee in fact the management committee look at the shortlisting yeah. and then recommend a candidate that is the final stage mm. before they recommend it to the minister the honorable minister of, um, uh, uh, of, of urban and rural development the final decision comes from the minister. So the frustration of the process there has got nothing whatsoever, although that is the perception in the public, with IPC. Mm. It has got something to do with the administrators there, including the then mayor. They were the people who were involved in there. 
IPC was not involved and that is the perception unfortunately mm -hmm. of the public and when the public are led by the news medias by the journalists and by the propagandists to say IPC is involved we are not going to spend a lot of our time on the fence talking about we are not guilty or anything like that no let the lie establish itself and wane itself out mm. IPC was not involved in that process neither was IPC candidates involved in that the IPC candidates were questioning the validity and the veracity of the rule of law and procedures that were followed in mm. terms of article 18 of the Namibian constitution administrative bodies which the council is an administrative officials with the chief executive committee um, uh, chief executive uh, uh, executive officer is shall be reasonable and fair and shall uh, be responsible to the relevant legislation imposed upon them yeah. so these people are bound by a rule of law to make decisions within the principle of the rule of law mm -hmm. any deviation from there and any deviation that IPC may become aware of shall not be tolerated shall not be because tolerated. the problem yeah. when a, the rule of men comes in when the decision making process involves the subjective decision of a, an executive then that's where the rule of law has broken down yes. so it has taken that long because the law seems to have been broken if the law was allowed to go ahead yeah. shortlisting and everything else etc there wouldn't have been any problems at all and you've got so many little meetings taking place there and there with everybody having an interest and in who's going to be there we have got no interest who become a ceo as yeah. long as they are able to deliver and execute the decisions of the councils doc thank you very much thank you for that we go for a quick <laughs> break and revert back Adam Tass is coming to Vindok to help build a brighter future for education. Join us at the Sounds of Caring concert at Vindok High School Fech Cop on 20 and 21 May, where he will be performing with Vaughn Irons and Rian Smith. Tickets cost 200 Namibian dollars and are available via eticket.my.na. All proceeds go towards the African Child Development Trust. We continue our conversation with uh, Dr. Pandolani Itula. Now, Doc, the, the, you see the 2020 mm -hmm. to 2024-2025, yeah. as a matter of fact, for local authorities because the next election will only take place in 2025. These five years, to many, are a window of opportunity for it's, it's seen as a rehearsal, but it's not a rehearsal, it's real business. That the political parties that are, are in charge of these councils now, you don't want to use the term <laughs> in charge, but of, obviously there are, there are groupings within these councils, alliances and whatnot, that have formed some sort of leadership. We, we need to see as voters the difference between the ruling party that has been in charge of these councils and the parties that are sort of now running these councils in, in, in whatever formations they have taken. In the case of Vinduk, for example, because what you are saying now here is to say that if uh, it's a collective, which, which technically is correct, but for example, before the 2020, 2020 elections, Swapo was sort of the ones in charge of the city of Vinduk. Uh, of course, there were opposition minority councillors there. And whenever something was not going well at council, we pointed fingers at Swapo to say, you guys are in charge, and therefore you must take the blame for whatever is not going right there. And of, of course, credit also for whatever went right. How can we not pinpoint to one now, now that uh, Swapo is no longer in control of these councils? I don't know how good you are at mathematics. You always Very say bad. A equals B. Yeah. 
and then we are balancing two things of equal status yeah. at the moment you don't have the equal status to make a real justifiable comparison yeah. Suapo was in the majority and facially a dominant party with nine or ten councillors or even eleven councillors completely at will to make decisions corruptly or not corruptly so and affected those decisions because the middle person, the executives and the administrators in the majority of cases were well selected Suapo members as well who were doing exactly what they were told. Yeah. At the moment you've got the decision makers who are in the majority of the whole bunch of the 15 mm -hmm. belonging to political parties, these political parties are not sending decisions to swap or to, to, to those political parties members either. Right. They are sending it to the same administrators that has been there during the swap. Yeah. Give me a good reason why swap administrators would want to see IPC or the alliances to look good in the delivery of services. Why would they want to allow the public to make a perception that these alliances of what they call wrongly political parties who are no longer in the who are not in the government much better if i was swapo and a swapo minister i will never allow that because that will put a confidence in the public for the next elections to say these people can deliver mm -hmm. the frustration of the lack of delivery is not inherent in the inability of the people not to believe in the need for services to our people. Mm. The failure to deliver is inherent in the administrators. They are the executors. Why have they been able to execute during the era of Swapo party in their majority yeah. and not in the era of this allowance? Mm. It's a simple calculation that you can make. You cannot say this is the five years of testing. It is not. Definitely cannot be considered as such. As long as there is a Swapo minister in the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, who makes and pulls the shot, who even physically goes to the councils like he was in Omthia last night, trying to communicate with the councillors down to influence the decision making. The panic and the desperation of the Swapo party now to ensure that councillors do certain things has gone to the extent that I've never seen a minister going into a council without a proper council decision inviting the minister. Mm -hmm. So the desperation is such. And the desperation is such that there is so much attack on IPC. Everything has left the IPC president, the IPC councillors, etc. Any opportunity no. to cut down the IPC is clearly utilized. But there is a failure of the uh, uh, public feeders to clearly make an objective decision making on why is it not working. Yeah. You know, you can't try to get the sheep out of the crawl mm -hmm. when the gatekeeper is holding the gate closed. Mm -hmm. Let the executive and the administrators execute the decisions of the councils and we'll see that. And the only thing is, he said, it's only in Windhoek where this problem seems to be. People shouldn't close their eyes yeah. on the other 37 councils out of the 57 that has got IPC in them throughout the country that are indicated on, which are working perfectly fine because those people as citizens of this country, whether they are SWAPOS or LPM or PDM, are working really well close to each other and even really communicating as servants of the people. Yeah. In the city of Windhoek, we've got a problem of individual ambitions in those that are in there. And these coalitions out to outside the IP coalition to see that IPC fails. Mm. There is even an, a sworn allegiance to say that whatever happens, I'll destroy IPC. If you are a councillor and you go into that council and your purpose is to go and destroy IPC, you are fighting the wrong battle. The battle that we are fighting is the battle against poverty, idleness of unemployment, completely squally conditions of accommodation, mm. lack of proper education, and lack of health. Those are the battles that should be fought by every individual council in those chambers. Yeah. To try and fight other political parties, you have got your spears in the wrong direction. Yeah. If you can fight those five giants of welfare, uh, of lack of welfare, yeah. then you are on the right track. And I encourage the minister as well yeah. to ensure that he does not interfere and encourages the execution of decisions of councils. That yeah. is where it is. In five years' time, 
Namibia cannot judge IPC as the government in waiting of our ability to govern. Yeah. We will be judged when you give us five to ten years to clean up the mess that Swapo has left for 30 years. That's yeah. the time that you judge a government that has got real governance power from the people and mandate from the people. Yeah. No. Now, uh, under those circumstances, yeah. Dr. Itula, um, your party is not in parliament because uh, it was formed after those elections were already... That, that shifted. And therefore we are not in opposition. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So... The, the the only the only entry point that we as the public have towards the sense of leadership that the party is capable of providing is where you are leading now. Um, the country has so many political parties, and I'm I'm just wondering, what is it that distincts uh, IPC from the rest? Because you you know you speak a different language, but. But that is more of a, at your personal level as, as a leader. Of course, you speak the language of your party, but the entity itself, how is it different from others? What do you want to be remembered for five years from now when ele it's election time again? We need to understand the origins of political parties in Namibia. Right from the 35 Somerset Street of Yatoivo, the Shipangas, when they formed the OPC. Yeah. What was the purpose of forming that political party at that time? Hmm. Political formation to its transformation in Ovambo People's Organization, to its formation in Swapo, and at the same time in the late 50s, the formation of SWANUS, you know, originating from some yeah. aspect of the teachers in du du during that time from the Southwest Africa Teachers Association, at the time of Joshua Oebe and the Z Gavires, et cetera, late in the 50s, and then the new door, National Union of Democratic Organization of um, Ombarao Chitambi, Othia Kutako, and then that formation of those political parties, what was the basis upon which they were formed? Yeah. And how did they transform over that period of time? And then again, go up and come up to its independence, or rather in the middle there in the late 70s, when the Swapodis came into existence because of what took place in Zambia in 1976 then, mm -hmm. when the Swapo party constitutions after the Tanga conferences were then adopted as well. And then go from when, in 1978, the Shipangas came into Namibia after the formation of DTA of Namibia in 1977. What was the premises of that? DTA of, of Namibia was formed in order to oppose Swapo party. And again, all these formations had certain sort of criteria and basis upon which they were formed mm -hmm. to get rid of the contract labor system, to be able to live with their people. Nothing about economic development of Namibia or anything like that in some of these political parties. Mm -hmm. And you emerge down in the 90s to the formation of COD. What was the basis? I don't like what you are saying, so I'm going to form my little house somewhere else. And then RDP as well. And then out of COD, APP, and then out of SWAPO, LPM, etc. And then you come to the Independent Patriots for Change. The Independent Patriots for Change, first of all, as I said, was conceived by five people. Mm. I came out of the political wilderness, as it were, on the platform as an independent presidential candidate. Not out of disillusionment of anything whatsoever, but on the 8th of October, following the Politburo of Swapo's decision and the sort of slate politics, that's when I realized that this cannot be allowed. Democracy in the party was gone. In terms of Article 2 of the party then, all those principles were destroyed. When His Excellency Dr. Hake Kinkop came to the Politburo and said, this is the people that has been asking me, and I think some of your newspapers were having it as well, that people were asking me, who shall I rule with? And I will be the President, Vice President Honorable Netumbo, Secretary General uh, Sofia Shaningwa, and the Deputy in the late Marco Hausiku, who was a political prisoner with me in the same cell in Kobabes. Those were the four. Now give me any real good lottery winners who can predict the coming of the numbers all the way through the next Politburo on the 12th of October, and then the Central Committee, and then the 2017 November Congress, and then emerge with four bulletproof similar jackets as the Heraldian call of this is what we planned. Mm. without any element of rigging or any element of untoward conduct in that day. Mm. That time, 
allowed me to say this cannot be allowed and I did what I others did not do. Yeah. I did not resign from the Swapo party like Ben Ulenga or late Hidipo. I did not. I decided to fight the injustice inside and I authored the independent presidential candidate document for purposes of others. I went to one person and to the next person and they didn't want to take it up. Mm -hmm. And I know that there have been three others at that time in Swapo's leadership who have been pushed on to go and become independent presidential candidate. But you see some of them were really consolidated inside the party, they could not do that. Mm -hmm. IPC came about and is the only political party that has adopted the Namibian constitution in its first aims and objective to say that we shall uphold and respect the Namibian constitution. Yeah. It's the only party that premised itself firmly in constitutionalism. All the other political party came in existence as a disagreement. We looked at the rights of the Namibian people and that is what the independent presidential candidate did first. Mm. And I recall in April when you interviewed me that I said to the people, look at the horizon. If somebody comes there, grab it. I was already in the process of formulating a political party. So we are premised and different from all the other political parties grounded in the Namibian constitution mm. and bounded by the principles of rule of law, yeah. unlike other political parties. That is what actually distinguishes us from others. And as we are grounded in that, our manner and the principles that we are going to be utilizing is founded when our people, not political parties, came together as representative in the constituents assembly yeah. to formulate the governance principles of our country. We are binding ourselves to that. Indeed. Doc, speaking of uh, constitu constitu constitutionalism, um, there's been um, a, a accusations. Uh, you, you must have seen some of them uh, on platforms like this where we've interviewed some of your party members. As a matter of fact, uh, Siske Smith Howard uh, is f facing, uh, she's the councillor for Swakopmund uh, constituency for my viewers, um, she's facing um, some sort of disciplinary measures within the party, part of which is of course that she spoke to the Evening Review, one of our shows here. Uh, for a party that says uh, it is a, a democratic institution, it, it, re it, it is premised on the constitutionality of our country, which includes freedom of, the, of, 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 of expression, for example, um, and she said when she came to the show, she spoke about how dictatorial you are. It's good that you are here to, 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 to clear that air. Um, just how democratic is the party? And um, what, is, what, are, what, were her the, what were her transgressions, if you don't mind? We need to be very careful when we are talking about people who are not in our midst. Yes. You are talking about what they said. I haven't got that recording here for me to go sort of a team on each of them there. I'm going to give you a general overview. Yes. Joining political parties is a voluntary association. You do so in terms of Article 21, you do so in terms of Article 17. Once you join a political party, you also constitute yourself in terms of the rules of that political party. You also sign up to abide yourself by those rules of that political party. In addition to that, you also bind yourself to be penalized in accordance with those common agreed political party rules as well. And you cannot come around and misbehave or do something contrary to the principle of the commonality and then decide that I will not adjust, be adjudged by the common principles of the party that governs every single member of the party. In IPC, we've got the membership and I know people have been criticizing us when we made the people to take an oath of membership. And within the oath of membership, it says that whatever I hear within the party, I shall not reveal to the others. Yeah. And in addition to that, we have got a principle in the party that we uphold the Namibian constitution and its laws. Mm. And if you in any way whatsoever transgresses the Namibian laws, you by implication transgresses the party rules as well. Mm. Now, it's only fair for you to avail yourself for arbitration by the party and not to go and run to lawyers, etc. The moment, as we are all now aware, uh, that a letter was communicated to 
Patriot 6 eh? and commonly and I read in the morning as well this understand another letter was there that she will be consulting with her lawyers these are internal matters mm. if you are in your own house and you are arguing with your wife or children or whatever they don't go to the neighbor and say neighbor help help they're arguing with me you came into this house to abide by the rules of the party and to ensure that whenever you transgress there is a grievance procedure as well and there's a provision in the constitution that says that you shall not in any way or any form communicate with any legal commence any legal processes mm. and unfortunately patriot siske commence a legal process with the high court and in that high court ask the high court that the party should not discipline her notwithstanding her agreement onto the principles of the party to discipline members as is exploited in article 5 of the party but she told the party stop these people from disciplining her the party then on that specific issue couldn't do anything our hands are bound that's why this process has taken long but whilst that process was there and she went to the high court to ask the high court that I've been restrained by this party can you tell them to put me back at work notwithstanding that process there mm. she went back to work and defied the party's restraining order the party in terms of code 4 of the local or regional authority said has got the power at law yeah. to restrain members on legal and moral grounds mm. and the restraint as it was stated in the documentations which are also in the public domain in the high court mm. was on grounds that she is not resident in the constituency in which she was yeah. elected as a councillor mm. in terms of section 6 of the regional uh, um, regional authorities act mm. a councillor no person shall be a member of the council unless they are ordinarily resident in the constitution in which they seek election or become so ordinary residents within three months now that three months expired in march april 2020 uh, 2021 and the residence was recorded also in the membership card is first oyster dolphin beach which is in rural wolves bay and not in swakop moon no evidence was supplied to the council to the party to the ngs of the party during the vetting system to say that the constituency of swakop moon or mm. the address is in swakop moon mm. and when we checked that it's not the case and here was effectively an inappropriate conduct here mm. so dictatorship we've got a constitution yeah. We follow that constitution and very often is the administrator general of the party, which is the chief uh, 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 secretary, the national general secretary, that execute those decisions. Mm. But of course, as the head of the party, everything that is being done is thrown to me as dictator. Now, we've had dictatorship being thrown to IPC's leader from the inception. Mm. We had the others that came in and he says dictator because they didn't succeed to get local authorities and there's been aims up in Oshi, whatever they, they had the henry's and all these other people they, they follow the same route they come to you and all of this said dictator but none of them pinpointed a decision evidently coming from me as dictating mm. what is to be done outside the provisions of the ipc constitution or outside the Namibian laws. Mm. One, and I'll challenge all of them, to come up with an action or decision verbally or written that has got my signature on, which indicates and substantiate the acclaimed dictatorial tendencies in IPC. And I can assure the public, there are no dictatorial tendencies in IPC. The IPC chief patriot has got no ultimate power to make decisions pertaining to disciplinary hearings or uh, uh, members of the party. And in any cases where I've got discretionary powers, I will always consult either with the National Director of Operations Kangulu in the South and three other people in the West, I mean, and three other people in the North and some people in the capital as well. And I'll always consult because it's nothing to do with me inside there. I depart from the party and operate on the outside of the party. I operate on the issues in the party for the interests of the party and the people of Namibia. Mm. That's all my interest. I've got no personal interest in any individual becoming a councillor or not becoming a councillor. As long 
as they are there to serve the public. So the notion of dictator has gone on the riding horse of so many people, including journalists, without any of them stating that because of action A, he is a dictator. Because he carried out this decision without any empowerment from the constitution, he's a dictator. In the majority of cases, including the so-called political analysts, they are extremely ignorant of the IPC constitution and the rules governing the procedures in IPC. Mm. Now, for anyone to try and mislead the public about the conduct of IPC without abreasting themselves, yeah. particularly the constitution, it's irresponsible from a severe lack of it. And some of them are still now suffering from the dictatorial hangover. <laughs> Whether yeah. they are going to be cured from that is to be seen. Is to be seen. Yeah. The, the last question to you in the interest of time, Doctor, is um, the, your, your recent visit to State House. Um, you went to see President Hagegenkop. We saw snippets of uh, the conversations around oil and whatnot. But um, if you can give us in not so many uh, seconds your, the overall aim of your visit and how it went. Well, um, I think in any political dispensation of justice in any country whatsoever, it's absolutely commendable for the head of state to recognize the political forces within that country. It will be irresponsible for the head of state not to recognize those dimensions of the people choices. And I think that visit should be seen in that light that it was absolutely mutually beneficial that His Excellency Dr. Hake Kinkop and myself and my delegation, which was the National General Secretary, came and his, as His Excellency says that, if you don't talk to each other, you suspect each other. Absolutely brilliant. And at the same time, we were able to cordially exchange views without any acrimonies in the best interest of the people of Namibia. In Article 100, Sovereign ownership of natural resources is in that constitution that provides ownership of all our resources to the Namibian people. And what I've explained down there is to understand the principles that are involved in the management and exploitation of our resources. From contractual relationship licensing, from monitoring and regulation of the exploitation, from collection of uh, taxes and royalties, etc., from the distribution of those royalties and from monitoring how those are actually taken into consideration. That framework there and the legalities in it is completely weak. Mm -hmm. We need to strengthen it. When you look at the relationship between NAMCOR and all the others, it's very shocking to see that we don't have a proper defense when all this agreements have been made. There is no legally binding decision as yet in the exploitation of many of our resources, especially the oil as well. Mm. Um, the beauty of the maturity in politics of His Excellency and myself, and you could see it in the handshake, is that that we were able to differ, not contradict each other, but recognize for the benefit of the people of Namibia that our destiny is the same and our goal is the same. And it would be wrong for me not to appreciate or to communicate with the head of state, even if we differ on majority of issues, even if we differ in the manner in which he um, stood against me and um, he lost and I won because I went in with nothing, he went in with 86. But despite that, in other parts of Africa, there would have been real acrimonious relationship. That is not there. And Namibians must appreciate that, that we as politicians, Dr. Itula hasn't got a personal ambition in what is taking place. My vision is of the Namibian people and not so much what I will gain personally. Mm. I go home and sleep without taking my politics home to my family either. And at the same time, it's critically important that that atmosphere of communication, of interaction for the best interests of the Namibian people must be maintained as unique mm. to our country. And there's a lot of people, for example, that goes on and say, yeah, he's got this ideology, he's got that, etc." Everybody else need to understand that. Mm. Ideologies is just beliefs of how to run a country. 
It's got nothing to do with any of the conservatism, liberalism, and all the others. We already have got in our constitution, in Article 98, the economic order of Namibia, which says that the economic order of Namibia shall be based on the principles of a missed economy, which shall be securing economic growth, prosperity, and human life with dignity for all Namibians. Mm. That is our way that we want to rule Namibia. Yes. And when you go into Article 20, free education. When you go to Article 15, no child labor. Mm. We basically have put in mechanisms in our constitution that will guarantee the manner in which we rule us, including fundamental rights. Yes. So any political party that comes onto the political arena of Namibia with an intention of some ideology, conservatism, socialism, and whatever, is misguided. On the left, you've got communism. On the right, you've got capitalism. Somewhere in the middle, you've got socialism. Somewhere between socialism and capitalism, you've got uh, democratic socialism. Somewhere there, when you talk about free education and free colleges and health and things like that, you get what they've got in the Scandinavian countries, so demo, uh, social, social democracy. Now, you need to understand these extremes, which communism was on the shelves of economic way of running countries, and people are still having a hangover of that one. That has gone off. The entire world is now a mixed in economy uh, arena, yes. including China, including the then Soviet Union or the Union of Socialist Republics, including the Scandinavian countries and America, and the Republican Party is even conservative in some of its policies. And the conservative party of Margaret Thatcher was liberal in some of the dispensation of what You get the National Health Service, for example, in the UK, which is a so social democracy principle on this side here, close to capitalism. Yeah. So we need to live away all these ideologies, all these beliefs of how to run and go to our constitution is clearly explained there. Yes. And I see all these political parties jumping about, we are Marxists, we are what, what, etc. It doesn't matter. This very, very constitution of the Republic of Namibia has already told us in Article 2098, mm. mixed economy, yes. which means take the best of capitalism and the best of communism and socialism, put them together. Major industries of economic in the hands of the pub, uh, pub, pub, public in terms of the government ad advanced with some degree of free market economy. Yes. In our constitution in section three, subsection one, 24 to 26, we clearly explain our economic dispensation, how we are going to run this country. Yes. Whatever we do is within article one where we say we will uphold the Namibian constitution. Any other ideas or knowledge of how to run this country that any other political party wants to make fancy names about is misconceived. <laughs> it's in the constitution. <laughs> Dr. Itola, thank you very it's much. It's always a good spot to have you here. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, time is never enough, but we'll continue not to engage. All, not at all, especially uh, from these dimensions <laughs> of all these things. Exactly. exactly. No, I appreciate your time. Thank Dr. you very much. Yeah. That was uh, Dr. Itola of uh, IPC, the president, uh, speaking to us about uh, those issues that he just. Uh, uh, contextualize. Thank you for watching and uh, good night. Thank you. Good night.